Oh, that was a quick intro. I hope you like it. Now, if you uh, enjoyed the other one better with the Marshall music uh, from London, British Commonwealth uh, Marshall music, let me know and I'll switch back to the old one. Uh, in the meantime, here I am with another after action report. And the theme is, again, uh, lost or won by one multi-man counter. And the major takeaway uh, with respect to to this is basically um, what you need to do is uh, pass your personal morale check, play the game until the end, and then see if uh, you won or lost, and don't jump to conclusions. Now, there are some situations that arise uh, that clearly you can see there's no way out. Um, now, if you are playing for the sake of playing and, and the enjoyment and the fun that uh, comes along with it, if a scenario lasts seven turns, unless you're in a obviously dire predicament, I would say then, yeah, have the good judgment to to uh, to quit. But the previous video and this video are examples of what can happen if you don't quit, and um, you do meet the victory conditions at the end of the game, as stated. So. Uh, with no further ado, the after action report is regarding Into the Rubble 15 Tractor Factory, which takes place on the 16th of March 1943 in Kharkiv, Ukraine. Now, the important thing about the date in this particular scenario is that since it's not 1994, um, what has transpired here is that the 658s do not have assault fire. And that's pretty important because uh, in this case what the Germans have to do is they have to take over three uh, factories or actually one, two, three, four factories. Yeah, four factories. Four out of four have to be in German hands by the end of turn seven. So we've got one here, here, and here, and here. One, two, three, four. Where's the factory? There's the factory thing. Now, this scenario has rooftops, it has factories denoted by a road going into the building. But um, we ha didn't use uh, we didn't use uh, rooftop rules uh, at all. So what I, I want to show you is a couple of the beginning turns and then uh, most likely the end of the turn. And I was playing the Germans in this case. I didn't put any divisional patches here because. Uh, my partner, uh, Dr. Alain Chabot, who is a uh, revered editor of the ASL rulebook, <coughs> possibly since the inception, <coughs> sorry. Um, and in the beginning of the, uh, during the classic world, he, he did a lot of Q&A as well for the rules. <coughs> and then he transitioned over to advanced squad leader and dragged me along a couple of years or Quite a few years after, yeah. Oh, coffee. So uh, Alain, his nickname is Dr. Gloom and Doom, or Dr. Doom and Gloom, Dr. Doom and Gloom. Not the other way around, because you've got to put the Doom before the, the Gloom, in this case. Yeah, I'll explain more as we go along. Um, in any case, let me explain to you the reasoning behind my um, uh, the setup, the way I did what I did here, is uh, basically, I divided my forces into three assault groups, each led uh, by the best order leader. So as you can see, the machine guns and anything that will hold me down is not with a uh, leader with a negative modifier. They are with the 8-0 leaders. So what happens here is the 8-0 leader is held in reserve, uh, and uh, his principal task is to... Uh, make sure everybody keeps pace with the advance and um, prevents the unit from coward. So again here, well this fellow didn't have a leader, uh, but here again, as you can see, the only uh, support weapons are holding are the ones that can force the advance. And um, there are fortified locations here. Again, the 8-0 leader here, so this is fire group three, two, and one. And again, the 10 minus 2 leader 
is uh, with a fellow that is uh, with a flamethrower because it's an offensive weapon and uh, with a minus two modifier, uh, they pretty much are unbreakable. And again, the Edo leader is uh, the fellow that's in charge of the support weapon platoon. These guys are pretty much on their own. I suspect that these things are dummies here. And I'm really not scared of 45L, but maybe I should be. Somewhere along here, there's also some hidden guns. So let's go along with the first turn, maybe the second turn, see how things transpire. Okay, we're putting on our snipers, uh, pre-game and concealment. I'm just showing which units can uh, conceal. And uh, these uh, units enter. I had a hard time uh, determining where it should enter because remember, there are a couple of uh, hidden guns. And I may not be afraid of, that much afraid of the uh, tanks in, in a rural setting, but with, um, with guns, it, there are something to be concerned so the uh, Tiger tanks come in last. You've got a couple of Panzers, Stugs. Um, again, these tanks are more anti-infantry than anything else. And here I am going CX on the first turn because there's a lot of ground you got to uh, ground a lot, a lot of ground to cover in very little amount of time. And let's not forget uh, that uh, firefights as well, prep fires. Can slow a person down. Moving in these um, tanks, and I I hate putting tanks in vehicular bypass. It stinks, but um, it, that's one way. I believe you can avoid uh, getting into a trap or a situation where you're just simply going down the road and and uh, the AT gun pops up and blasts you from the rear. Some folks are under uh, op fire. That's a, a tactic I'd like to use. Corporal Curious rolls an 11. Uh, yeah, let me adjust the screen so you can see my rolls as well. There you go. Now you should be able to see what I'm, I'm rolling. All right. And here we are. We're making great strides in advancing here. Um, here things go a little south. Maybe not the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but look, I approached them. I don't know how I did this, but I approached them virtually concealed. And that's what you really you'd like to do is, is keep concealment to the greatest extent possible. Here we are in uh, close combat. And that's, that's the thing. Um, going into close combat with a concealed unit, the concealed unit gets a plus two to their ambush roll. Um, and that makes them pretty powerful, you know. They might end up getting the first licks on your squad uh, and with a negative one modifier. God help you if you are also CX and going uh, into close combat with a concealed unit. You know, Anywho, it uh, looks like the first turn is a little bit uneventful except for a good uh, advance. Um, not sure why Alain is really on the other. I have a lot of my armor in motion. Well, now it's his player turn. I'm surprised we did two player turns in one log. And he's moving up. He's moving up his armor, trying to. Uh, oh, he's skulking. And he moved up his armor to uh, avoid. Uh, me crossing the street and it's the classic question uh, why did the chicken cross the road and here again we're skulking except in one situation where he left because he was not in melee he was concealed so in this case I'm left with a potential uh, uh, enemy unit in my rear so I had to get rid of it uh, that was an excellent tactic on uh, Alain's part, he also likes to keep concealment and advance 
into close combat concealed. Now, I don't know why I told them to get a commissary there. Maybe there were commissaries. Yeah, I think there were commissaries in the OB. I have to admit this was a fun scenario. All right. Okay, the second log. It's probably German turn two. Yep. Let's see what Georgie does and uh, German turn two. We set up off board reinforcements, roll for weather. No such thing. I guess it looks like it was a no. All right. We blow some smoke and we're going to start crossing. That was pretty stupid of me. Um, I uh, bumped them. Uh, ideally, what you need to, what you could do, well, you could bump them, but I'm wondering what's more beneficial: bumping them or stopping and expending one movement point to to search, and then, yeah, you take search casualties. I'm wondering, but in this case, it. it proved the, the consequences of what I did proved to be fruitful because I survived all counterattacks here, uh, which was a bit of a miracle. Oh, and I'm looking at his rolls. He got a, a 12, an 8, a 7, a 5, but I had a moral, uh, uh, I ended up getting a morale check and rolling a 3, a 6, did I do that for? There. Okay. Here's my armor uh, popping up. So far I've managed to avoid uh, all things wrong. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to eliminate him by going, going point blank. Should have even overstacked it, but he asked me. But. The worst that can happen by overstacking is a near miss, I suppose, and getting a detrimental viral. So here I am, uh, uh, smacking the hornet's nest, so to speak. I am oblivious <laughs> to the armor facing me with coaxial machine guns, throwing down smoke and advancing into the building. Big deal, one unit broke. Here comes another, individually, right? And forcing his hand at, uh, at uh, shooting. So the tank will be surrounded. There you go. <laughs> I have no idea why I moved this guy back. So here comes the uh, the defensive fire, Russian defensive fire. We're getting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, sniper rolls. I don't know why I land checked his uh, average at this point in the, in the game. And I'm not too sure how you can expect uh, a complete flop. Um, you know, there's six five eights. Unless you get a KIA, same goes for four five eights. Any but anybody with an eight morale is almost invincible. So here I'm trying to uh, eliminate the uh, tankette to no avail. I'll be going into close combat. Here I'm advancing fire, and I'm, well, I got a snake eyes here on a MC, so that's heat of battle. Not too good if, um, if uh, you end up going berserk out in the open. And um, he did his job. Looks like he threw the flamethrower over at this corner, 
where most of the units are masked. And we got uh, uh, units breaking left, right, and center. So this is the German advance phase. And we're just firing for X. And here, a couple of units are pinned, a couple of units are not. A couple of folks are, are routing. This stack routed, got into close combat here, there, and we just got a nice line of fire into the first factory, a good foothold with a line of fire. Uh, what's that guy doing? Oh, he's a 12 up, whatever, up 12 up one because it's in a factory. No big deal. If he wants to fire on his own hex, his own troops, by all means, let him. We got three close combats, a sniper check, a uh, bad one with uh, a unit uh, breaking. Uh, this guy here was a bit decimated, but um, not much we can do. And a close combat here, the 548. So let's see how the uh, close combats transpire. Which one are we doing first? Let's uh, minimize it, go up here, and see what's, what's going on. We're going to other, no ambush. I rolled an 8, he rolled a 5, and we got ourselves a melee. Uh, one greater than he needed to break me. Here, in that factory, so we're going from top to bottom. Let's close in on the action here. There you go. I rolled uh, infiltration, snake eyes, and uh, forced my way further into the factory. Plain and simple. Eliminated this first person here, so now I got the squeeze on him. But there's still a lot of units here that are uh, concealed. Anything can happen. Here, uh, I'm probably locked in melee. He's not. Did I get him? I think I got him. And here, I think uh, Alana is complaining about the dice rolls. So let's take a look at the stats. 6.41. And uh, let's go a little bit further. Alliance 6.38. So we're all close. No. Dr. Gloom and Doom. Hey, who? A guy's a banner. No wonder he's complaining. You know, the lowly squad takes out a, a, a tank. Tanks are vulnerable. As we can attest, there's no such thing as a good tank or the world's most powerful tank. I think tanks are only as good as their crew at the end of the day. You abandon the tank, open your hatch. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do a, another game turn and then we'll jump to the end. Uh, we're 18 minutes into recording. So um, this is Russian turn two. And things look quite uh, bleak for the Russians. Um, yeah, well, we got the, the first factory. The second factory is about to, to fall. And we uh, have the beat on uh, the fourth uh, factory. So things look like a big C so far. And uh, let's take a look and see. So it's a land's turn, a land turn two, I believe. Let's take a look and see. Rolls for weather. We're trying to rally units with those numbers. Not so bad. To hit my son, did I ever take a sand check? Um, that was a good uh, hit because I believe what happened there is uh, he uh, immobilized the first uh, tank the first tiger he the cruise subsequently uh, subsequently fails the task check so he abandons the afv 
But being an experienced player, you know if that crew survives, uh, you keep keep him under the ta tank for with a plus one modifier, and then you reoccupy it in the next uh, movement phase, like spending all your movement factors. You're better off having a, a fixed tank, a, a, a tank at a fixed position, and no tank at all. Oh, here comes the classic skulk. Here we go. No defensive fire. No. I'm not complaining. You want to skulk? Skulk. There's always something to do against skulking. So there's a prep fire, and uh, it's a good leader with a medium machine gun. He managed to DM two units. This guy's still held in melee. He's doing his job. Okay. I don't mind when people skulk. But when you do give me an opportunity to fire, like you do here, we'll try and take you out. <laughs> So I'm rolling all sorts of two hits. Uh, this guy ended up uh, getting out of the way as well. You no, know, he took he mobilized one tank, but the other tank, boom. Did he have any rate of fire? Nope. I think ultimately I may have forgotten a sand check on my end. And here we go. So here's the routes. He had to route first. Ended up routing back, but uh, he looks like a lonely boy here, to quote a, um, a song from the Black Keys. Advance phase. Moving back into position, I suppose. Couple of close combat, uh, close combats. I don't know why. I don't see any close combat. Oh, here, here, up here. Yeah. Ongoing close combat. And units are broken all over the place. We'll do one more turn and then jump to the end. We'll see how things have changed and evolved. I may have skipped a turn here. Uh, hold on a sec. I may have not uh, uh, opened the right block. I'm just going to... Okay, let's see if I got the right log file here. Yeah, it looks like I do have the correct log file. And see uh, here, um, I am keeping my crew with the AEP. Uh, at the end of the movement phase, he'll reoccupy it. It's my player turn number three. Okay, this factory is about to go down in flames. That was my weather. These guys are broken. They're firing. Oh, it's moving phase. See, I right into right into it. I'm um, getting into the movement phase, and this guy's pinned. Two residuals. They're firing all over the place. There we go. Move that tiger up right up front. And we're advancing with a lot of caution. 
here, blowing smoke, and we're forcing the armored fighting vehicle to fire, we're forcing people to uh, unconceal, and uh, here's the, uh, the big C that is forming in formation wise. The top factory is about to crumble, the last factory is on its heels. Um, the skulking thingy tactic won't be much use anymore. Unfortunately, this guy never recovered or recovered too late in the game. This fellow was half squatted. He uh, found one gun and the other gun was up there. Um, but they didn't make much of a difference. And this fellow here, uh, his days are numbered. And the 8-0 leader, I simply kept him in the rear uh, to rally units and make sure that they uh, that they um, are good for, uh, to move uh, laggard units from behind to the front uh, more easily. Here we go. That uh, unit here, this tank here, is being surrounded more or less. And of course, we are advancing. We're using smoke to our advantage. And here, at the end of the movement phase, I reoccupy the tiger. So, bottom line is, could probably hit this X and prevent him from uh, trying to encircle me. If we wanted to. More movement, tanks blow. I into the sex and kept them in motion. But in the meantime, my infantry is up and at him. And I'm not too, too worried about a 76, even on a side shot. What's the 76 going to do now with this guy here? 12 even attack. I think the wrong tank got knocked out, but still I ended up getting a little crew. Should be marked under hazardous movement, but here I roll another sniper check for the Russian player. He ends up destroying my armored fighting vehicle. My infantry, however, have survived uh, across the street safely. Should have tried rolling those tanks into the factory and see what they would do. So uh, it looks like this thing is going to crumble. Going sniper checks. Finally, this dude is broken from his advancing fire, regardless of the fact that he was pinned. Now, chances are it's going to be a, a after route comes advance, right? I'm going to pick up a, a Russian MMG, a couple of routes. The first factory is about to fall. There you go. There's the fall of the first factory. The second factory is more or less enveloped. And the third factory. Uh, we're point blank face to face with them more or less. There's no room to uh, skulk here. There you go. I mean going into close combat, big deal. A lot of concealment uh, counters have been lost. Um, still merely there, but um, no big deal there. There we go. Now let's jump to the end. 
at this point here, um, my opponent was despondent. So says, oh, you ripped right through me. As, as you can see, there's only, what, three hexes, four hexes, hex rows between one board edge and the other. <laughs> go, go skulk on that one, man. <laughs> sure. But um, there's fortified hexes here. Soon to discover. There's another fortified hex here. Um, guess you, got, you have to, uh, you know, um, defend on a wide front and as the old expression or the old cliche uh, stipulates, it is what it is. Uh, here the attack didn't go as well as planned because you can see how many units have either casually reduced or, or, uh, or broke. Um, in this case though, this fellow here, he's the big joker uh, with a a um, flamethrower, a crew, a, a tank crew that survived. I transferred the uh, flamethrower to the crew. Uh, I lose one firepower uh, to and free up eight. I was wondering if that crew could use the uh, flamethrower without impediment. They are considered elite, but they are a tank crew, not an infantry crew. Anywho. Probably you can dispute that, but he didn't. Um, so let's jump to the end, because at this point, my opponent is despondent. It looks like the Germans just slice through. Uh, within three turns, they advanced one, two, three, four, five. Five times four is, what, 200 meters? Yeah, 40 times five, 200 meters. You know, that's almost a quarter of a kilometer. <laughs> All right, in six minutes. Pretty going pretty fast. I I can't blame my opponent for, you know, complaining. But anywho, let's jump to the. So this is how the uh, second to last turn looks like. So this is German turn six, and I guess we were anxious to uh, conclude on this game. And what was happening here? was that we finally discovered where that tank was, the hard way. We overran this factory and we forced the Russians out of these buildings here. Um, did we incur a lot of uh, wrecks? Yes, we did. Did the Tiger survive? One of the two did. The other one was just immobilized. Now, that's what you call a super tank for its time. Um, the Typhoon would soon take care of that, I suppose, and so did uh, the Firefly. Let's not underestimate the... Um, the Canadian and UK fireflies. We have a berserk unit there in melee. <laughs> uh, rarely do you see that. Uh, we have the flamethrower up and running. Uh, these this hex was overrun. You want to wonder why you got a tank uh, a tiger adjacent to you. This ta uh, stack is completely surrounded, but um, there's still a couple of units that can fly between one factor and the other. Uh, there was no sewer movement. Uh, we slice through this factor and we have a melee there. And we got to decide how to uh, eliminate these units. Um, so let's go down the uh, line. Let's see, this is turn, German turn six. Uh, there's actually German turn, Russian turn six, uh, Russian turn six. Okay, and uh, in terms of rallies, not much success. Uh, here the rolls are considerably high. Um, somebody's rolling on the two hit. Oh, there, up there. Uh, the AT gun against the those folks. Um, I rolled uh, boxcars on, on a morale check and unit kind of disrupted. There. Uh, the shots are quite ineffective. Uh, I did get pinned somewhere, or maybe not. I rolled an 8 on a task check, so it should be okay. Um, my defensive, of course, and um, not much is going on there except. Uh, 
for firing and getting these guys demoralized. More fire. And everybody breaks in that hex. We pretty much have one, two, two factories, three. Now this is one the one that uh, is uh, remains behind, and I'm shocked that uh, I'm still in melee here and I didn't uh, get eliminated. Everybody else is broken. We final fired. So this is really where the action is taking place. So this is the uh, the Russian route, and they're getting out. This guy's pinned, but with a five to one odds, it, he doesn't control the factor anymore. Um, I rolled three on, on, in the close combat roll. I then rolled eight. And now he rolled snake eyes. Because there's two combats that he wanted to do. He broke up the attack into two attacks, into two defensive attacks. So this 238 just uh, caused infiltration and he got out of the melee. So he has a multi mine counter there now. So now uh, the odds are stacked against me. And here we are advancing, or actually firing. Oh, rallies. German rally, turn seven. Alain, not rally. I put a couple of guys under opportunity fire. And Rolled my tank around, threw some smoke, got in there, we eliminated the uh, Berserk 6 to 8 in the previous close combat phase, this guy final fires, rolls a high number, that fellow Fires was a high number. That dude is a blank, I believe. We got one berserker. That is lax. How do we get in there? Oh, he was pinned. He was pinned by in virtue by being pinned. He can no longer um, prevent me from entering the fortified location. Huh. This fellow is in melee. This guy is uh, berserk. He goes into close combat, he goes into close combat, that guy goes into close combat, and we go into close combat there. That's a big close combat. Here's a close combat counter. There's another close combat counter. So the odds of me winning there are pretty good. 11 to 4, so it's actually 12 to 4. So that's 3 to 1. This is uh, 4 to 1. And here we got... 8 plus 5 is 13 to 8. Oh, nah, that's a not good odds at all. No, uh, yeah. 8 plus 8 is uh, 16, so it's not even 2 to 1. Here we got great odds. Let's see what happens. 
as you could see, I went and just threw all the other counters off the board because uh, at the end of the day, this is what counts. So I rolled a 5 on the first close combat, and then I rolled a 9. I think I won that one. And here comes a 4. Now that close combat, we're rolling for ambush, 4, 4, no ambush. I rolled a 7, Alana rolls an 8. I get that one. Now we're rolling for ambush. Uh, that's ambush. And wasn't that ambush? I rolled a 12. There. So 12 is infiltration. And what happens? That unit is out of there. So that was not ambush because uh, he had to roll a plus one to his um, dice roll. He was berserk. He had rolled a a six. He had rolled a six. I had rolled a two. So I was um, I ambushed him, but subsequently to that, um, I rolled a twelve, which is infiltration. So he gets out, and that squad won the game. And we just did the last close combat to see what would happen. And uh, as you can see, I rolled a five um, with a five, and that's uh, uh, that would have been a nine to his four, so two to one odds. Um, I would have gotten him; he would not have gotten me back. So one roll of boxcars, and he snuck out of there, and he still has control of the factory. Hmm. So I was wondering if, if had I done mopping up? I don't think I could have done mopping up uh, with a... Uh, with um, a unit in a fortified hex that was in good order. Doesn't sound right. Um, so that, that's more or less it. At the end of the day, one roll, one squad, and one little situation like that can cost you a game. Um, so uh, the moral of the story, and forgive the cliche again, it's not over until the fat lady sings. In this case, she sang loud and clear, boxcars on the last CC roll, and the factory does not belong to me, <laughs> nor does the victory. Congratulations to Dr. G uh, Doom and Gloom at La Chabot. <laughs> you did again, buddy. And um, I, I say that because at the end of the day, uh, the following day when somebody asked them, how did you do? He had given the victory to me. And then the, the following Tuesday, we play every Tuesday night, I, he told me the story. I told him, you know, I'm going to do a, an after action report on this one. And, and your call sign from now on is Dr. Doom and Gloom. And he found it funny because at the end of the day, he did win, but he didn't feel like a victory at all. And uh, I encouraged him to, to continue playing, and rightfully so in this case, because uh, despite the destruction and horror, all it took was one instance of bad luck, <laughs> and the game is is his. Uh, in terms of casualties, whenever I could, Alan likes just to throw the, the things left, right, and center, the counters left, right, right and center, but uh, you can see it was not a, a picnic for the Germans either. Um, no. We have to virtually one to one odds in terms of CVP. Uh, yeah, not counting the ELRs and, and whatnot. I think he could have done a better job if he had named his leaders. Just my superstition. In any case, that's more or less it, uh, guys, uh, for this game. Um, some other channel news, um, and I'd like to feature some comments on the previous videos. I did do a video on um, 
on uh, a, on a Hasbro scenario, and involved uh, Chapter O. And I'd like to thank John Kusick for uh, his uh, helpful comments. Uh, he did point out to me that there is on um, on a uh, website. Uh, geez, I forget the website where it's called now, uh, but. Um, he did refer me to a, a website that um, had an overview of chapter O. Give me a second, I'll, I'll bring that to you. So it's Desperation Morale, um, mini charts, reminders and checklists, under player aids. Uh, you'll find uh, something with respect to chapter O uh, for, for red barricades which is a, a very useful cheat sheet, sewers cheat sheet. Yeah. And I've used some of them and I have them downloaded. Here it is, the Red Barricades uh, cheat sheet. So I was had a question about uh, debris and debris according to this chart is a half level loss in, in hindrance, inherent concealment, uh, plus one tem, plus one Hindrance, I suppose. Case A to hit the arm not doubled. One plus cost of terrain for movement. One quarter of movement, play, uh, movement points and a bog check for fully tracked vehicles. Half track not allowed. Uh, which is really uh, interesting. Yeah. And here is the person that did it. It's Mark Pitcavage at worldnet.at.net. Interesting stuff. I'd like to thank uh, uh, John Kusick for his helpful comment. Uh, Charles Hammond, one of the creators of Hasmo, also commented and said, uh, check the scenario card, George. There's six armored fighting vehicles, not nine. I don't know where he saw nine, but it's, it's all good. Um, my fellow Canadian from, uh, um, from Ontario. I thought he was in BC. Renfrew, Renfrew, Ontario. He also commented, he likes 20 firepower kill stacks. I do too. <laughs> Until they break <laughs> and take a leader lost morale check or a leader lost task check. Yeah. Things happen. Yep. Um, I also like to thank the fellows at uh, Two and a Half Squads for subscribing. Hey, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. Uh, I like two and a half half squads. They're uh, mild mannered uh, gentlemen that uh, really uh, have good entertaining content on their podcast and their YouTube channel. I'm more of a visual guy and I like YouTube more than podcasts. I cannot stand podcasts. And um, they have a lot of satire, uh, useful interviews, the whole kid and caboodle. Highly recommend their site. This is not to say that I don't appreciate all the other new subscribers that this channel has attracted. I thank you all. Uh, that is from the folks that have been here since the very beginning and the more recent ones. Um, I wish I could mention you all one by one, but time doesn't permit. I hope you enjoyed this video. And by the way, when um, uh, John referred me to uh, Desperation Morale, uh, he inspired me to do another video on, on ASL, and I hope you'll find it entertaining. Don't forget, do let me know what you think about the new introduction, whether you like the old one or the new one better. Comment below, and don't forget to like this uh, video. Take care. Bye. For now.